Today I'll be making neurographic heart art. Welcome! For this project I will be using watercolor paper. This is Master's Touch watercolor paper. It's 140 pounds and I am starting off by taping my paper down on my board with just plain masking tape. I do this because then when I add water the uh, paper won't ripple as much and I also like to have a nice crisp white border when I am finished with my painting. That should do it. All right, I'm gonna start off with a Sharpie and it's important to use permanent marker on this that won't be affected when adding water. And what I'm just gonna do is pick one point to start and just make some scribbles, patterns, swirls, whatever I feel like and have it go off of the page somewhere else. And this is just to kind of empty out your thoughts of anything that's bothering you. Just add these kind of swirly patterns to clear your mind. I've also drawn a heart nice and large in the center of my paper. And now I am going to look for connections. So anytime some lines cross each other, I'm going to add these little connector pieces here that are curved lines between the two lines to make it like a little connection. And so I'm just going to be going around my project looking for these little connectors and adding curved lines to them to kind of thicken up where the connections happen. And this part is actually very therapeutic um, just to kind of wander around the lines and looking for those crosses and then filling them in a little bit with these connections. This is supposed to be very good for your brain to work on this. Um, it's supposed to be very calming. Here it is up close. So there's a cross. I'm adding my curve line that follows the edges and then filling it in with my marker. Now, if you're more comfortable using a thinner marker for this part, please feel free to do that. Just looking for any connections, any times that two lines cross and filling them in. Now I've done most of the connections that I could find and I decided I wanted to add a few more lines to my picture. So 
I'm just looking for some empty spaces, maybe up in the corners. And I'm adding a couple extra lines and a couple extra connections there. Now, if by chance you miss a connection, we can always go back and fill it in later. So if there's a spot that I didn't notice, I can fill it in even after I paint and it's not a big deal. But I just wanted to kind of break up some of these larger sections that I had in my picture here so that I could have some smaller spaces to color in later. All right, time to paint. Now I did speed up this process a little bit just to kind of show you so that you would get the idea of what I was doing. Um, basically, I am choosing a color scheme for my project here, and I decided that inside of my heart, I wanted to use a couple different shades of pink, and then outside of the heart, I wanted to use a couple different shades of yellow. Um, it, it is more impactful if you have kind of a different color scheme for the inside of your shape versus the outside of your shape, but if you wanted to, you could just do random colors throughout as well. Now, as I am painting in my heart, I am trying to kind of paint areas that don't touch each other so that the colors don't bleed together later. So I'm going to kind of jump around and pick little sections that maybe touch in the corner but aren't necessarily sharing the same side. Here I'm just starting with one color, with my lighter pink. And then if you want to, you can even add little drips of water or drips of extra color once you've completed a space that just kind of makes it a little bit more interesting to look at later. So I like to kind of go back in and add a little extra drop of color or extra drop of water and just kind of see what happens. I'm going to let that sit for now and start working on my background while that's drying. I'm adding some nice bright sunshiny yellow to my background and again just like my heart I want to kind of jump around and do areas that maybe only touch in the corners. I'm also trying to avoid getting too close to my pinks so that my pink and yellow don't intermingle on my paper. I want to try to keep them separate. You can see I'm starting off with a nice bright yellow, but sometimes I'll add a little bit of a darker yellow just along the edge or in the corner just to make it um, have a little bit more depth to the painting. The paint that I'm using is uh, Shinhan Pro watercolors. This is a professional quality watercolor. You can see that I accidentally missed a spot, so I'm going back in with my Sharpie and filling that little connection back in. And it goes right over the paint, so it's not a big deal. I am getting darker, and you can see that it's mixing a little bit with my other two pinks on the side because I didn't wait for it to dry all the way, and that's okay. I just don't want that to be happening everywhere on my picture. And I especially want to try to avoid that with my yellows if possible. I'm trying to make this pink look quite a bit darker, even almost a red color, so that there's definitely a difference in value from one to the other. So I'm trying to use a lot of paint and not quite as much water and that usually makes it darker. You use more paint and less water with watercolor then it'll give you a darker brighter pigment. So I finished my heart making those areas nice and dark and rich and now I'm going to try to do the same thing with the background here. I started with a darker yellow but it was so similar to my yellow that I had that I decided to add a little bit of red to make this more of an orangey yellow. So I'm starting off with a nice bright yellow and then dripping some of my cadmium red 
into it to give it kind of an orangish tint. Decided for this project to keep it all warm colors, light and bright. But again, you could do whatever you want with this. You could do warm colors on the outside and cool colors on the inside. Just have fun with it. I am finishing up my project, just adding another layer here and there. And I'm just so happy with how this turned out. Such a fun, bright, colorful painting. I hope you enjoyed painting with me today. And please let me know what you thought of this tutorial. And uh, if you enjoyed this type of painting, I do have another tutorial on my YouTube channel. Uh, it's called Neurographic Art, and it's done with circles instead of a heart, so check that one out as well. Please like and subscribe down below if you are enjoying these videos, and uh, if you want to receive notifications, you can hit that bell, and anytime I add new videos, you will be notified. Thanks so much for watching, and have a fabulous day.